Hello there, I'm John and I hope you've got your fruit and veg ready. Look at this, look at this prop. I always get a little prop. Look, look at that, isn't that lovely? As today, I do believe that one of these items might be something fairly relevant for today. Um, as today, we are going to be visiting professional watercolour artist Liz Chatterton, live from England, who's going to be exploring line and wash techniques using items from your fruit bowl or the fridge. But before we embark on a trip to see Liz, a quick shout out to our most recent patrons for joining our arty community. So a thank you goes to Jan Adams, Terhi, uh, Laurent M, Anne Jolly. That's a great, that's, isn't that a bright name? Jolly. I love that. Uh, Michaela Conchilja. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, Michaela. Uh, Roberta Shields and Donna Lynch. So thank you so much for uh, supporting us. And no matter what level of patron you are, you'll now get automatic entry to all of these art webinars throughout the month. Uh, simply visit our live events page on our website to see what's coming up. Also, later this month, we've got a live art gallery tour that you can join. So I hope you're as excited as I am about that. Let's see how that goes. Um, so anyway, this art class is a shorter prelude to Liz's two to three hour workshop webinar, which is happening in a few weeks time and gives you a good taster of some of the things that she'll be teaching in greater depth at the full event. If this is your first time joining us, although you can pick up a tip or two from just watching these shows, they're really designed around practical learning and this class is no different as you can speed paint along. It's fast and furious but complements the longer workshop where you can then dig deeper into the techniques and pick up even more tips for improving your art. So without further ado, let's zoom to Liz now. As we journey to England, the recommended materials for painting along can be found on our website. Simply search for the class on our video library page and click the button class info. You can also find a direct link to our video library in the description below. As we come in, I think I can, yeah, I can peek through the chimney. I can see Liz is sat in her studio. Hello, Liz. Hello. How <laughs> are you? Yeah. Very well, thank you. And it's lovely to be here. It's been a long time since I've been doing a, an arty class with you. So it, that's it nice. Has almost six months, although this is oh, our 22nd no. show together. Can you believe that? Um, and oh. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? But yes, half a year. And during this time, uh, shameless plug coming up, I understand that your new book, Line and Wash oh. Painting, has been doing very well. <laughs> oh, a shameless plug. Oh, no. Yes, it has. So um, it was published in January and it has all already topped the Amazon bestseller list, which was very exciting. That so, is brilliant. Yeah, it's going That's well. brilliant. Yeah, we did, we did a post about that on our Facebook page. It was just brilliant to see you at number one. So congratulations. <laughs> and I guess you've planned it so that both this short class and the upcoming longer workshop will cover some of the themes covered in the book. So that between the book and painting with you live, people should be able to get a really good practical understanding of painting in line and wash. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that's the plan. So this what we're going to do today is one of the exercises from from the book. And um, the as you say, the workshop is I mean, it's not in the book. It's a totally new subject, but it's one of the techniques that's that's there. So I thought that would be nice to kind of yeah, bring just it to life. Just compliment, compliment it really well. So that sounds brilliant. Very logical. Almost as though we plan this, Liz. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Um, well, I can't wait to get started, but before we do, a quick 30 second word on how today's live event is going to work. So first we're going to walk through the preparation and this will include talking about the process, which might include sketching, theory and applying the first layers. Then we're going to take the opportunity to see some examples of Liz's previous works of art for a bit of inspiration. And we'll also discuss her upcoming two to three hour workshop webinar at the end of this month. Um, I'll also explain how you can qualify for a discount for that full workshop event as well. Um, Finally, we'll complete the tutorial after which, whether you're watching live or watching the recording, you can share what you've done on our Facebook or Instagram page for comments and feedback. So with introductions done, let's get back to Liz and we'll start putting pen and paint to paper. Liz, back with you. 
Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you for the introduction. Are you okay to um, highlight my, my of workspace? Course, of course. That would be lovely. So, what we're going to do today is um, just use fine liner pens because they tend to be the thing that most people use for pen and wash because they're so easy to get hold of and they're really cheap as chips. But I want to show how we could use those. And let me just give you an example of what we're going to do. So these are for the, the sharp-eyed people, onions. <laughs> um, uh, I made the mistake of doing this exercise with onions which was fine when they were whole, but of course, the moment you cut them, I started crying. So I thought I wouldn't do that today. But the <laughs> we idea- don't, We don't want an emotional painting session, Liz. <laughs> we don't, we don't. <laughs> it's really hard to focus on your painting when you've got tears running down your cheeks. So, um, but the idea is that we're going to try and address the perennial question, which comes first, pen or wash and by choosing just a simple subject and doing them both ways we actually learn a huge amount and so I've done it with onions I'm going to use a lemon today because it makes the studio smell yummy uh, in the past I've done it with oranges um, oh gosh in the summer I grabbed a radish out of the garden and played with radishes so frankly you can do anything that's that's the plan so just just feel inspired grab what you want to grab i yep. love that the idea that maybe a lemon or something that smells citrusy in your it's, room while you're doing oh it. it's lovely but actually something like a piece of broccoli would be lovely you're looking for something that's got some interesting shapes because she says grabbing another piece of paper these pens as I say, are, are great because you can get hold of them, they're cheap, etc. But they are really, really boring. And you know, what I mean is that, you know, this, this pen is a 0.5 and it will make a line that is 0.5 wide for, you know, a mile until the, the ink runs out. So you as the artist have to work a little bit harder to put some interest into the marks. And I just want to, we won't do this now because we've not got time, but just as a, as a suggestion after the class is get your boring pen and make it interesting. You know, look at different ways that you can make different marks with it. So again, let me pull that up. You know, you could be very precise and do parallel lines. You could do dots. You could do lots of scribbly squiggles. You could cross hatch. You could do very jagged uh, scribbles. You could just do crisscrosses. You could, I've, I've done this a few times as well. You could do really stylized sort of zentangly type lines. So that's, I'm going to set homework. You know, see how interesting you can make your pen um, and that's a really good sort of exercise to do just to sort of warm up. But I'd say we haven't got time for that. Have a, have a play, basically. Have a play. It's, have a play. Make it interesting. Don't just pick it up and think, oh, I'll do a line. Uh, make it an interesting one. Yeah. Now, uh, but, just a few comments. Um, so Carol said, I've got the book and it's brilliant. So thank oh, you, bless Carol. You. And uh, hey, Hanadi, hey. Hanadi said, always a joy to see Liz here. Alison, oh, loving the fox. So she's obviously spotted the fox behind oh, you. Oh, yes, behind. Um, <laughs> and uh, Christelle Le Petit said, love your hair, Liz, and your art, of course. <laughs> right, back to you. Right, Liz. crack on. So I am going to start, what we're going to do is start with whatever your, your fruit or veg is um, by starting with ink first. Now, if you're not certain, by all means, just do a little pencil underdrawing and then um, go in with the pen, just as you get familiar with the shape. If you're, if you're happy to go straight in with pen, do, because it's quite nice to feel the difference between you've got that support of the pencil, which can make you a little bit tentative. Whereas if you've got no pencil there, you have to be committed. So if possible, I suggest just go straight in with your pen because it makes you committed. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've got a piece of 
watercolour paper here, it's £140 and it's a knot surface. Frankly, you can use you know, any scrap you've got or you can use a decent bit and make some really nice little kitchen art if you want. But um, I am looking at my lovely lemon and I am simply going to come in and start to draw it. And the joy of doing this is frankly, no one will know whether it's terribly accurate or not because, you know, lemons are pretty jolly simple shape. So I might say that is way too simple and I'll start to put some lines and I might break some of those up. You know what I was saying about trying to make interesting marks. I'm going to put some dimples and, you know, the, the lovely sort of pits and dobbles that they have on them. I'm not sure dobbles is a proper word, but you know what I mean. So you think how you're holding your pen as well, because if we hold it down here, in sort of right at the bottom in a sort of really tight grip, you get a really tight line. Whereas if you hold it maybe a little further up, you can get more expressive marks and you can break your lines up. So, you know, a lemon might be just like that. And you think, oh, my goodness, that was a quick class, wasn't it? But of course, what we can do, and I really hope I'm not going to cut my hand in this process because that would be a giggle for everyone, wouldn't it? You know, I can, this is where it mm, smells gorgeous. You need a glass of gin next time. Well, <laughs> I don't like gin. Oh. I'm sorry. It's, oh. I'll, I'll, I'll go with my fresh, fresh um, lemonade would be nice. But uh, yeah, gin's too, too bitter for me. I can't, can't drink it. Really sad. So if you've got a, depending on what, what fruit you've, or veg you've got, think about a different view. You could cut it in half. You could just do a, a view from a different angle. And this time, if you did use pencil there, I'd love you not to use pencil. And just because you're familiar with the shape now and, you know, that, that, that would be cool. And now let's sort of go in and I'm going to do some continuous line drawing. So that just means I'm not taking my pen off the um, surface. And that gives a sort of different shape and different feel to the lines. And I'm going to do some lovely squiggly bits for the, well, the flesh, isn't it? Those little pockets of juiciness to sort of just bring some of that in there and do as you know as much or as little as you like and you'll suddenly find you know some people will be doing incredibly detailed very precise drawings and some will be doing very expressive and you know do a couple of lines and think oh I'm fed up with that and even this really simple exercise just shows up so many differences in our own preferences um so I'm putting in some of those little juicy bits over here as well. And that, you know, you can do as much or as little as you want. And, you know, I might start to look closer because it's the case of the more you look, the more you see. So I'm suddenly realising we've got the, the zest around the, the bright yellow and it's actually got lots of little dotty marks. So I'm wrong just using lines. I'm doing little circles to build up some of the texture of that lovely um, zest round there. So I can do that. I might want to break up some of those lines because on the whole, um, a broken line is a little bit more expressive and interesting than the perfect straight line. So I'm, I'm doing little circles and down here I'll do a few more. I can, you know, as uh, the more you look, the more you see. And I can see there's a sort of line there that then goes into the centre um, with, I say, all that sort of pith going on there. There's a line that sort of goes, wiggles down there. We've got a little sort of heart-shaped mark almost up at the stalk. So there's a little, I don't know what that's called. I guess it's the remains of the flower that this developed from very exciting we've got a lemon tree that my husband bought at the uh, 
garden centre last weekend and it's already got lemons on so uh, that's inside oh, that's waiting insane. waiting for summer so that it can live outside on the patio and we're going to have to keep bringing it in and out because the UK is not really known as the lemon growing capital of the world is it so uh, well you never know with climate change you know it might, it might, it might yeah go. let's let's hope that's not the case I to know, be honest exactly <laughs> what, 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 what sort of crop are you supposed to get off a lemon tree on a is it oh, not, fairly small not, not, well, no, no, because it can have flowers, baby lemons and mature lemons all at the same time. So we should get a decent crop. Uh, the reason we've got the tree is that friends of ours up the road do grow lemons. Oh, okay. And they, they had so many that they ended up giving them to us and we were rather jealous. So we now have our own lemon tree. We did make limoncello with it, if anyone knows that yummy, yummy drink from Italy. So... Mm. Uh, very nice. Oh, Alison uh, said she makes her own limoncello. There we go. Yeah, well, yeah. well, it absolutely delicious. I might not like gin, but I certainly like limoncello. Hmm. So we're going to have our own. So you can see that I've started to do that drawing and I could fill in all those little pithy marks, but would it make it look more lemony? I've got to ask myself that question. And I don't think if I filled all of that, it would be any more lemony than it is at the moment. So I'm not going to do it. I'm intrinsically a fairly lazy person. But um, leaving a little bit of ambiguity and something to the imagination is, is no bad thing. <coughs> I'm just going to cough, though. You could, if you want, I say I'm using a 0.5 here, you could change up your pens if you happen to have different widths. You know, I could go for, this is a, a one, so a thicker. I might say, well, actually, I want the outside edge to be a little bit thicker, so it's stronger. Um, I could, if I can find one, that's a 0.2. I could say, oh, which one was I doing? No, that one, wasn't it? I could say, oh, actually, some of these little marks are a little finer, so I'll use a finer pen. So that's another thing that you can start to think about as you do this, that the strength of your line. Um, I'm not going to do, she says, very much of that because, because of the time, but say, she'll, we'll just strengthen that line a little bit there. The other joyful thing about these is that they dry really quickly. Uh, if we were doing this using, say, a dip pen or a fountain pen, the ink would need to dry for, well, I don't know, maybe an hour. But these, it's on the paper, it's dry, super duper. So we can start to think about putting some colour on top. And I've just got a rather mucky looking set of watercolours here. Um, I'm going to spray them just with clean water. Now, should we wait until after the halfway mark for this or should we do the first no. layers? No. OK, I'll go with your. <laughs> because okay. there's something I want to show you. OK, perfect. perfect. <laughs> because this is obviously ink first and I want to show you watercolour first. That's why I'm sort of zooming through. Yeah. Now, I'll just also just uh, first of all, there's a question. So uh, Patricia yeah. asked, can you uh, tell us what brand of pen you're using? Um, and do they need to be do they need to be waterproof? Absolutely, they must be waterproof because we're just about to put watercolor over the top. And if they yeah. weren't waterproof, it would be a big muddy mess, not nice at all. So any of these fine liner pens, on the whole, they have what's called pigment ink in them, which means it's waterproof and it's light resistant, so they won't fade in UV light. The well-known brands of things like Unipin, um, Microns, but these actually are unbranded. If you're in the UK, I just got them from Hobbycraft when they were on special offer. Okay. Um, you can, so you're just looking for waterproof with pigment ink. Okay. And as I say, they tend to be the ones that most people use just because they're pretty ubiquitous. Derwent make them. Um, I say, well, just about everyone makes some form of them, but 
there's not a huge difference between the somewhat more expensive ones and the unbranded, to be honest. Um, so, as I say, these are these happen to be from Hobbycraft because they were on special offer. OK, perfect. And then the other thing I'll just mention to um, if, if people have, have just started following us or uh, you're new to us, if, if you've really enjoyed digging into that lemon there as we cut it, cut it through and you, you're getting into the detail, you really enjoy. We did host a, uh, a nature journaling specialist called John Muir Laws in California, and he loves taking simple items and almost detailing them to the the finite degree a really fascinating class and there's a free class that you can actually watch if you head over to our video library and a search, a search for John Muir Laws and it's his first class which was in November of last year and if you click on class info you can watch it for free um, you don't need to be necessarily a member but watch it I think he does a pepper but it's a really fascinating class if you want to really dig in I know we're obviously doing pen and wash today but that's a really fascinating insight into really detailing things if you're into that stuff so I just thought I'd mention that right so no I love John's work in fact I will go and I haven't seen that and I I will go and have a look because John's work is amazing and he's such an enthusiastic oh he really teacher. yeah a real character what a lovely man yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't really, I've got a couple of his books and I have oh watched. there you go yeah so have a have a look uh because it's I will thank to watch. you I might, I might learn how to do this <laughs> brilliant Ooh. right so um what I wanted to do say is so if you were doing this at home, I would suggest maybe doing three or four of these because then you can try different ways of adding colour. I've only done a couple because I want to get some colour first so that can dry before half time. But if you've got, say, three or four of these, the first one you could try painting in your normal style. So if you're a precise person, do some precise painting. If you're a splishy, splashy person, do it that way and then try other ways. So on this one, the cut one, I've just got some lemon yellow because that seemed rather a good color to have that I am going to put on and I am not in any shape or form trying to paint inside the lines. Um, I think, and now I'm just grabbing some cadmium yellow just to warm things up and dropping it into the, the, the wet color. I think that line and wash works at the best when both the line and the colour bring something to the party. I'm just going to put a little bit of green. Oh, that's a horrible green. Sorry, I don't, I should actually test my colours. Oh, well, never mind. Horrible green it is. Um, it's a lime. <laughs> yes, it, it <laughs> is. Hmm. Slightly unripe lemon, obviously. Um, and let the colours mix. But I think, I say, line and wash comes into its own when the colour and the line work together so that they're more than the sum of the parts. The temptation is to do a drawing and colour it in or to do a painting and outline it. And both of those are missing a trick. So if you've got a few of these, have a go at being relatively loose not following the lines and if something interesting happens like that merged actually encourage it to happen a bit more you know maybe think about using a little spray bottle if you've got a little spritz bottle you know soft soften an edge so some of the color goes off and look at it and think you know do I like that is that too messy for my taste is something interesting happening that I, I couldn't sort of predict and, and start to embrace a little bit of the spontaneity of the medium. You know, if you're a splattery person, what happens if you put a few splodges of colour? Does it make it feel like for my lemon, the juice is bursting out and it all, you know, it, it brings all that sort of excitement to it? Um, you know, how is that different than if over here, I looked at my lemon, which obviously is now cut in half, but I looked and thought, oh, it's a lemon. I better, you know, paint inside the lines and maybe I'll leave a few little highlights. And won't that be precise and lovely? Well, actually, I would argue that that is not terribly interesting. Whereas actually letting colours work 
and um, mix on the paper is going to be infinitely more interesting than trying to control the, uh, the, the, the watercolour and trying to make it do what you want. You see, I can't even paint inside the lines when I'm trying to show you how to paint inside the lines. Luckily for me, that's just, it's an anathema to me. I, I really can't do painting inside lines. I, I don't want to, so I'm gonna spray that as well. I'm gonna, I don't know, there's some, I was awful as a child. I couldn't have a coloring in book, but, that's what I want to show you. So get some excitement, get some movement. L don't just, the lines are there, so they give you some scaffolding, but then you can play with the colour on top. So that would be my line first, then watercolour. Before we go for that break, John, I'm looking at my time. Can I just get some colour on the other one? Yeah. yeah and no then problem. that can dry. Yeah, so I'll just pop that there, because then what I would suggest is that we put colour first, let it dry, and then put the lines, and then we can say, oh, well, I like that, that felt better to me, or, nah, that's not my way. And even doing this really simple thing will just teach us a lot. So usually, gosh, what a mucky pup I am, um, I would say, oh, just do a very loose watercolour. Now, people find it amazingly difficult just to put blobs of colour and leave them alone. Because if I said, paint this lemon, you would try and paint the best lemon you can. So my suggestion with whatever fruit or veg you've got is literally to print with it. When you were at school, you probably did something like potato printing or you know, we use print. So just put some watercolour on whatever you've got and literally print with it because it comes out awful. It, not awful, but it comes out loose. You cannot control that. So I'll just do a few of those. We're going to let that dry and then go back in with paint. It, it forces you to be loose, is what it you're saying. It forces you to be loose, exactly. And you can print, so mushrooms are great for doing this. Um, what else is, is good? Anything with a bit of, it puts a little bit of texture. Let me pull that up so you can see. It's put a little bit of texture. You know, here we've lost bits. Well, that's great because that'll give us space for our pen to do some work. And it forces you not to try and paint this perfectly because people really struggle with letting go and this just forces you to let go yes trina says printing with broccoli stalks and stems is a really interesting shape yeah yes I, guess, I bet that I, I guess the key thing though is just remember that you've printed with it and don't use it in your cooking afterwards <laughs> yes i am not if i had gin and tonics this would not be great i don't think they've had some cadmium yellow on a little heavy metal poisoning is not good so we won't do no, that no, no. Um, right. So ready for a break, Liz? Yes, because that needs to dry. If it hasn't okay. dried, I've got a hair dryer. So Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Right. So what a great start. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Um, now in this interlude, while we wait for that paint to dry, uh, we'll take a little look at some of Liz's previous works of art. I, I love this bit from the nosy <laughs> side of me, um, just to get a little <laughs> bit of inspiration uh, and see what she's brought out. I can see it on the screen. So are you ready? Let's let's show you this. It's right. I, I hope. Sorry, this is under cellophane. So a little, little bit of reflection, but if you just yeah, tilt, tilt it up, that's it. Should be it. Okay. Yeah, there perfect. we go. Oh, so, that's lovely. All these pictures I have you've done watercolour first, then put line work on top. So right. I've um they all started off incredibly loose, splishy sploshy, and then the pen finds the form and helps you define it. So this Bassett hound, um, I do rather love. And then, you know, there's quite a lot of detail around that eye because that's our real focus. But actually, the watercolour did a fair amount of work. And down here, there's hardly any pen work at all. 
So that was one to show you. What, what's the story uh, behind his face there? Is he looking up at his owner wanting wanting a little bowl of food? I think so. I, think I that... would imagine, <laughs> <laughs> knowing Basset Hound, it was inspired. Friends of mine used to have the most gorgeous Basset Hound called Rosie that used to sit on your feet when it was um, winter. It was wonderful because she was so warm and heavy. She would warm your feet up, but it was always in the hope of, you accidentally dropping your chocolate. Yes, exactly. exactly. So, um, yes, that's who inspired that. Um, I want to show this one. So a very colourful polar bear. Um, I actually started this as a demonstration in a class or something. And as with demonstrations, you tend to stop in the middle because you're talking, whatever. And I got home and I thought, God, that's appalling. <laughs> it was such a mess. But actually, a little bit of line work found that polar bear again. And on this one, actually, I've used, again, let me hold that up a little bit. I've used even a little bit of white pen, not just black pen on this one, okay, yeah. just to find, find a little structure. So that was an example. Now, this is going to be better because there's no reflection. So this uh, Great Dane... Um, Again, I started, I knew that I loved the light along his nose, so I did a really loose background and then came in with some very scribbly marks um, to, to do that. Uh, what else? Oh, and let me just get the light off that. So this ram, again, I did um, lots of watercolour first and then went in with, with ink. And again, I got a little carried away with some of the ink and felt it was heavy. So I came in with white ink on top of the black as it happens here. So actually going in with really quite wild colour and then finding that the pen puts you back in control and gives you a little bit of order. So it's, it's a really lovely way of working to kind of loosen up because you know you've got the pen as your backstop. If you're struggling with, I'm just looking if I've got any other examples. No, let's let's just stick that there so we've got something to look at while we're talking. So, yeah, it, it just gives you a little bit of comfort, really. So you can, it, I think this form of line and wash is a really good way of loosening up your watercolours if that's something that you want to do. Yeah, no, that's great. And Jean said, um, I, I've been doing this style of loose colour first and then working in with pen more recently. And it's so liberating, great fun. So uh, Jean's obviously really found that uh, it's her cup of tea. So that, that's brilliant. Yes. And, yeah. uh, no, thank you for sharing that, Liz. Th those were those were lovely. I love the, the vibrancy of your your paintings. They, they look really fun. And it's no wonder you sell so many uh, prints and things. So it's lovely. Um, and they look amazing. And let me know in the comments which painting that Liz sh shared with us today stood out to you and, and why um, also if you're watching this on YouTube and you're you love what we're showing you today we would both really appreciate you hitting the, the thumbs up YouTube then recommends the show to more people which helps us with our mission uh, to inspire them to give art a try young and old alike so thank you in advance there now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Liz and we're going to discuss what we're going to be covering in the longer workshop webinar later this month. Now I can see you've already, <laughs> it's, it's not our 20 second show for nothing, you know, Liz already knows exactly what's coming up. Uh, so Liz, uh, you've put the painting there. We're going to be doing uh -huh. this. It looks yes. very dynamic. and Yes. Well, I thought, oh, what, what would be nice? And generally, if you know my art, I tend to paint things that I know. So I'm more likely to paint a pussycat than a tiger because we don't have so many tigers in rural Berkshire, luckily. <laughs> However, having said that, I was thinking, oh, shall I do a dog? And, oh, no. and then I thought, oh, a wolf would be wonderful. And I there is a wolf conservancy quite close to us so that's my excuse <laughs> um so i started this wolf with background washes and i've done and i don't know if you can see here we've got lots of sort of explosions of color and literally i just blew it sharply and the color exploded and then i let it dry and then i came in with pen and started to really define and tie it together. 
then I let that dry. Then I did some more watercolour because line and wash isn't about, oh, you do your line, then you do your wash, or you do your wash and then you do your line. You can alternate. So I did some more watercolour. Then I came back in and thought, oh, no, I need a little bit more pen. Then I did some more watercolour. So on the workshop, I would like to build up. Um, this has probably got, oh, I don't know. I probably did two or three lots of pen and two or three lots of watercolour to build up a bit of depth and, and sort of uh, energy, I guess, to it. And right at the end, I did actually use a little bit of, again, let me hold this so you can see some of those markings. It's coming to get you. <laughs> Sorry, I just looked at the screen <laughs> and thought this wolf's coming. But we've got... Um, a little bit of white gouache at the end just to break up some of the areas as well which we might or might not do you know if you can just see there oh, yes, I put yes. some white marks as well so the idea is that actually I mean it's a pretty limited palette look how organized was I I put my little swatch and even stapled it usually I do these swatches and then totally lose them so I only use one two three five five colors Brilliant. on this but you know a limited palette does not mean that it's a boring palette uh, or a boring painting you can really build that up so the idea is we'll start with watercolor we'll get some order to it then we might build up more layers more energy with watercolor if we need more pen we can do that then possibly more watercolor and then final touches, bringing it together. We'll do some sort of texturing techniques. So like these sort of this blowing technique, I think is really quite chaotic, but the pen just gives you enough control to, to bring order out of that chaos. Yeah, so no, it's, it's got a lot of life to it, hasn't it? It really... Uh, I hope so, yeah. Dynamic and really, really pops. That is going to be a fantastic workshop. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you, Liz, for sharing that. And as said, this longer two to three hour workshop webinar, it's, it's obviously more immersive as it gives you a lot more time to explore and digest the techniques. Um, there are also opportunities to get feedback along the way during the workshop, just like a real on-site workshop. So if you do want to join Liz and, and learn how to bring animal portraits to life using pen and wash, um, it's taking place on Tuesday 29th of March at... 3.30 uh, UK time and if you can't make the day and time you also have the option of purchasing the video which is exclusive to paid customers and certain patrons. We never publicly release our workshop videos on YouTube. Um, spaces are limited for the live event and to book you can either click the YouTube pop-out link which will appear just here um, or visit our website shopkeeparty.com and at the top in the menu you'll see the live event section if you scroll down there and you'll see the wolf just there and click on see details and that'll take you through to the workshop page the materials list at the bottom with those that limited palette that Liz was explaining and then if you go up under book ticket um, you click on Liz's shop there and here you've got Liz's webinar or the video and um, just before I show you the webinar ticket if you scroll down you'll see there are a number of other shop pages that Liz has got limited edition or other prints canvases things like that so if you are interested in her art you can purchase those there um, if you want to join the webinar literally click on the webinar you can either just join the live webinar or the webinar plus the video at a discounted rate um, add it to your cart go to checkout just like normal um, it is in pounds uh, but if you're in dollars or, or euros it'll convert it after checkout by your uh, local bank or whatever if you do purchase the video uh, in the future you can head over to our video library that I was talking about a bit earlier and you can search by artist and select Liz on we've got a growing number of artists it takes ages to go wow. the, uh, the artist there we go Liz um, and there you can see all Liz's uh, previous and past classes and workshops and obviously uh, we list everything chronologically um, so her workshop will be there you can click on the class info to have a look at the materials you can purchase the video and then you can just watch it if you've purchased it so it's all very straightforward 
So in addition to all the other benefits, our patrons can also use a special link on our live events page, which gives them a 15% off these longer workshops. Right, let's get back to Liz for the second half of the tutorial, where we're now going to add some more detail. Hopefully things have dried. How, how's it looking, Liz? Um, I was just looking. Um, I just need to give this a quick blast with the hairdryer if you would just give me two No problem, seconds. no problem. Thank you. Um, it's just, just a little bit wet and you really do want it to be dry before you put any pen on top because otherwise your pens will just give up the ghost and not, not do what they should. So two seconds. No while Liz is doing that, I'll, I'll read some comments out about the paintings that Liz shared. So Jane said, the bear and the ram, great mark making to try. Karen loved the colourful polar bear. White is not always white. <laughs> That's Karen from Canada. Ingrid said, wow, stunning. Uh, Trina said, yes, wolf, it's stunning. My best friend loves wolves and just had a birthday. So dot, dot, dot. I think that could be a birthday present coming up. <laughs> um, uh, Sam said, I love Liz's animals. They pull at your heartstrings. Um, Ingrid said, does Liz uh, a pencil drawing first or how does she get the wolf back? So uh, how, do, do you start with a pencil drawing first or sketch it out? I would start with a pencil drawing first for, for an animal because, you know, with a lemon, if it's a bit squished, it was a squishy lemon, it really doesn't matter, but a squished wolf does not look good. So um, we would just need to make sure proportions are, are right, but I would take everyone through that on, on the workshop and, you know, some of the tips for, you know, measuring and just making sure everything's where it should be. And Sandra said, why not a cat? Well, you know, we, you've got, there are a lot of animals in this world and um, <laughs> and we've got, but, you know, you can apply what Liz will be going through to any animal. So if you did decide that you wanted to do a cat rather than a wolf Absolutely. or whatever, you could, you could do that. Um, we did also do a cat uh, class <laughs> in the past, didn't we? So if you, if you, Sandra, if you go to our video library, you'll be able to and search for Liz and you'll, down there somewhere there is a cat so you'll be able to there have is. a look and we we did an eagle i think uh, in light pen and wash at some point didn't we, we did was that nick yeah uh, it was an owl wasn't it I oh, an think. owl that's right yeah. it was a, an eagle owl should we call it an eagle owl just to yeah. be in a compromise yeah yeah that yeah, was a yeah. long time ago yeah so and andrea yeah. says do you do birds too so there we go we've just answered that question andrea before <laughs> i love i love painting birds yes yeah. i have yeah down behind me I can't show you but um, I'm in the middle of painting a white um, stalk at the moment it's very oh, exciting all right that's right and I, to be honest I, one of the very first classes you did was that crazy cow which I, <laughs> I, I I love that so do have a look at our library for that because uh, that was that was a sort of a blue cow wasn't it, it was sort of a blue Ooh, in quite color. possibly it was, yes it was, yes it was, it, it was it, a it, great it, great uh, painting so do have a look for that as well everybody um Right, they're dry now, hopefully. They are, they are. So you will have three or four, you know, uh, lemons or broccoli or whatever ready. So again, use this as an opportunity to experiment. So maybe on one, if you're a little uncertain, actually do a pencil under drawing and then do your pen. But then on the next, go straight in with pen and feel the difference, see which you prefer. So what I would do, I'm going to select this one and you can see from my printing, you know, only half of it came out, which is absolutely fine. So I've got a 0.5 pen. I'm going to basically draw my lemon and almost, but not quite, ignore the, um, the, the paint because we're not just trying to do the perfect painting and then outline it. It's that whole thing of what I was saying before of, I want two and two to equal five for pen and wash rather than two and two equal four, or even worse, two and two equaling three. Now that would be a bad situation. So, however, I may have some absolutely gorgeous marks that might have happened. So 
in places, I love to actually follow the marks. And sometimes I like to ignore them so that we've got that lovely contrast for the viewer, whoever's looking at this, of like precision and spontaneity. So we're trying to make lots of visual interest here so I can put in some of you know the, the marks but here actually they're quite fun and I'm going to just outline those so whereas over here I'll need to add some more in because this bit didn't print so I'm going to add some more in then down here I quite like this mark as well so I could break up the line but sort of outline some of that mark. Again, I could swap the pen if I wanted to be a little more precise or, um, you know, just to change things around and stop me getting bored, you know. Um, so we can come down here. This is quite a nice white mark that I've got in the middle where it was sort of left. So I might actually embrace that mark and so basically ignore what you don't like and accentuate what you do and you you are in control and you can make it what you want so I'm, I'm going to vary some of these marks to make some of them a little bit larger and some are going to be a little bit smaller I'm going to do some of them a bit more precise and some of them a bit more loose basically you're using the randomness of the print to kind of inspire the mark making that Absolutely. you decide to oh well, you're getting good at this john oh god that's been a few years <laughs> I, I, I would i'd probably yes. um mention another artist at this moment if you're enjoying that element because and you know Khan griffiths as well Liz, oh yeah but Khan griffiths uses um tea within his art which is quite an interesting medium but he he splashes that out very random and then he will do <laughs> floral um uh mark making with ink within the randomness of the mark the, the paint and the tea that he's splashed on his page again you can see some of those on our video library i mean his work is absolutely amazing um and yes he has that total randomness of his sort of tea and ink and explosions but then really precise um a lot of sort of patterning within it uh of which builds up the final image um really stunning work yeah. i love it and he's actually coming back in april we're going to be doing oh, right. a, a fox portrait um which, oh. with, which um hopefully it is on our live events page but it just says coming soon at the moment so everybody <laughs> can have a look uh, at that when that's launched okay cool so here you can see that I'm I'm using some of these patterns. And again, I've got rather a nice pattern here that maybe I'll just emphasize. Quite like that one. So I am going to do some outlining, but here I've created my own pattern, ignoring that, that color. So I think it needs a bit more balance up here. So again, we've got that nice little mark that's into the stem. And I did a rather strange shaped stem. So I might just put some extra lines in there and maybe put in some of the pith and so forth here. And I can extend it and change the shape. People think that pen is very unforgiving, but actually, if you put the wrong line in, just put the right one in and somehow the human eye, bless it, just reads the correct line, which is so, so good of it. it. It doesn't see your mistakes. We see our own mistakes, but the viewer, the viewer absolutely won't. So I would develop that. So if you've done one that was starting with a bit of pencil because you weren't sure, then you can do one going straight in with your pen and then I would suggest maybe doing the final one taking the best of those two to to think oh I like what I did there I'll do more of that 
don't like that, I'll do less. And then maybe doing a final one that you could even then go back in with some more watercolour if that's appropriate. So say I looked at this and thought, oh, I, I do like the green of, you know, the stem. I think I do need some green in. So I could then go, go back in, but I'm deliberately not colouring in those lines. And actually, there's some sort of grey, slightly more gungy colour in places. So maybe I'll go back in and just give a little bit more depth and a little bit more interest in places. So in your third one, say you could go back in with watercolour because it really doesn't have to be an either or. You can do a bit of pen, a bit of watercolour, a bit of pen, a bit of watercolour. And as long as the layers are dry, you'll be safe. If you try and do pen on top of wet watercolour, it all just gets a bit of a mess and vice versa. Um, so you could do that. And then the final bit of it, of course, is to compare the two that you will have completed and say, OK, well, which did I enjoy? You know, which, which felt more natural to me? Which had a better result? And, you know, which am I most pleased about? Which do they look at all different? Because maybe they don't. Maybe you can't tell the difference. But potentially, if you start with your pen and you use very opaque watercolours, so lemon yellow is quite an opaque colour, it will actually mean that the pen isn't quite as sharp and strong. Now, you might be happy with that and you might like that. So that might be a good process for you. Or you might say, no, I want the pen to really look at its freshest, in which case you would do your watercolour first and then do your pen. So compare, compare and contrast. <laughs> what do I like? What worked? Um, what felt most comfortable? Perhaps I'll do that next time I am doing something proper. Um, now, let me guess which one you prefer, Liz. I think you prefer the doing the ink and then going all random, yeah, the, the bottom one. Is, is that more you? No, you see, I ah. actually, no, I like both. Oh. So I deliberately just, yeah, I deliberately change things up. If I feel I'm getting into a little bit of a rut, mm. I will think this one I'm deliberately going to just splash paint on and then find the picture. And sometimes, gosh, even I have precise moments sometimes. And some, sometimes it's really lovely to lose yourself in the ink and to get loads of detail and to almost, but not quite, do a complete drawing and then add colour. And it depends what mood you're in. So I, re I sometimes deliberately challenge myself by changing things up if I feel that I'm getting a little bit of a rut. So, that's good. yeah. That's, yeah, that's a, good, a good lesson for everybody to take away, I think. Mm. Um, Liz, it's been a fantastic hour. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, and how did you get on? I hope you're feeling as inspired as I am. Uh, just out of common, everyday <laughs> veg. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, go ahead and just, okay, just pick just... some random things. You've either been doing it during this class and painting along or, oh, yes, yeah, Liz has got some peppers there. That's I was going to say, just to prove peppers, there you go. They, they, they are brilliant. Fun. Just to, you know, and you can print with the peppers as well. Um, this was ink first, then them watercolour yeah. but you know you you can you've obviously got the seeds with them that are really great they are fun yes, and the shapes yes. are brilliant um yeah. and actually the wonkier they are they are the better um yeah. you don't yeah. want anything too perfect a little yeah. imperfection is lots of fun yeah they're crazy so, um, well, I'd love to see, obviously, what what you've done at home and all the different variety of different things. I know Trina mentioned early on she didn't she couldn't find a lemon, but she had some garlic. So garlic would be a fantastic oh, one. Oh, lovely. I bet they yeah. would be lovely. Um, so as we near the end of this show, if you've got any words of thanks you'd like me to pass on to Liz, please write them down for me now. Um, also, Liz and I'd love to see, as I've just said, what you've created from this class. The post relating to the show is already on our Facebook. So uh, search for Shopkeep 
Keep Arty on Facebook and you'll find it there and you can just share your a picture of your painting in the comments um, and there's also a link in the description as well. Before I go back to Liz and read out the comments I want to mention an SKA first which is happening towards the back end of next month. We've got popular watercolour painter and Bob Ross fan David R. <laughs> Smith flying in from Minnesota and joining me in central London where we're going to be hosting a live plein air workshop to paint Tower Bridge. Um, you can either join us online and put your questions to David while we're outside or you can actually join us live in London itself. So uh, <laughs> this, this is going, oh my God. <laughs> I know, I don't know what we're letting ourselves in for. I know, I know, I don't. Uh, anyway, simply visit our live events page on our website where you can watch a short video that David and I made about the event. And if you are considering joining us in London for that event, we're, we're only accepting a small number of people, <laughs> as you can probably imagine. So uh, <laughs> so please book soon if you want to secure your place for that. Um, I, I'm hoping it will be really great fun. Uh, for, and also the first of many, if, if it works. Um, right, I'll now go back to Liz. We've been having some great comments come in, so I'll, I'll read some of them out to her now. Um, so Karine said, hello, near Metz in France, always interesting uh, the tricks that Liz does and how wonderful and beautiful the art is. Uh, thank you, Karine. And Victoria said, we've missed you, Liz. So <laughs> enjoyed this and looking forward to the Wolf Workshop. Um, Trina said, many, many thanks to Liz this morning. What a fabulous class and so inspiring. I have a box of acorns and leaves and little bits and pieces and I'll try this technique with it uh, as well as my garlic. And I'm looking forward to the Wolf <laughs> Workshop. So, uh, so and then Alison said thanks so much really enjoyed it I love Liz's work I've been waiting for ages to sign up for Liz's Wolf I'm off to sit in the garden now with limoncello hooray Yay! <laughs> uh, Ingrid said I I think I like the watercolor first I'm always a bit too precise thanks Liz for showing us Yvonne said thank you for another great session with Liz uh uh, Deblin said thanks Liz Patricia said thanks uh, again for this demo love this technique Stephanie said wonderful demo as always thank you Susie said what could be better uh, thing to do uh, with an hour with Liz sketching wonky veg thank you so much uh, Rebecca said thanks so much for this was really fun and inspiring just got my book and excited to try more uh, Valerie said thanks very much uh, very inspiring to watch you Sally huge fun thank you Liz Jean said thank you so much so lovely to just sit and play had such fun and must do one of your real classes Come on, Jean, you can do it. We it'll must, be, must. <laughs> it'll be really good fun. Uh, Jane said, thanks for the enthusiastic demo. Andrea, I very much enjoyed the class. Thank you so much, Liz. Um, Lynn said, loved it. The animal paintings are great. Bobby said, thanks for the inspiration to attempt loose instead of stressing <laughs> over exact. Yes, Bobby. Uh, and Barbara said, wonderful intro to line and wash. We'll definitely try this. Thank you so much. Liz, you are a delightful instructor and artist. <laughs> Uh, Rosalind, I know, I know. We'll, we'll make you blush by the end, Liz. Uh, Rosalind said, great fun. We'll definitely have a go. Uh, Sue said, thanks, Liz. Always a pleasure to do a class with you. Uh, Sue only had courgettes, but really saw the difference in both styles. Um, Hazel said, I love my limoncello. <laughs> great class too. Thank you, Hazel. Um, Patricia said, oh, yes, got my book as well and love it. So um, there's, a, there's a few fans out there, Liz. Uh, oh. Sam, you are such a wonderful teacher, Liz. Mary Jane. Thank you. I am like a squirrel who wants to try it all. <laughs> Brilliant. Good. Yes, exactly. Good. Brilliant. I think we've had a, a some really lovely comments there. Thank you so much. It certainly sounds like we're going to have some great fun at the hour long workshop. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to click the notifications bell when you subscribe, as it then notifies you when we launch a video with a new artist as well, for some reason. And if you if you want to extend this last hour and pay Liz for a full workshop event where we'll focus purely on creating an amazing animal portrait together, don't forget to sign up. Uh, link is again in the description. Uh, so thanks for joining us. And until next time, it's obviously goodbye from me. But obviously, thank you so much for your just general enthusiasm and you're always so giving Liz with all your techniques and everything. Thank you to Liz. Thanks, Liz.
Oh, thank you. It's been lovely. And those were absolutely gorgeous comments over my, my dodgy wonky lemons. So I really <laughs> appreciate that. I hope you have fun with your veggies. Yes, thank you. And obviously you get a big round of applause. And we're finished on your lemons.